All right, as we get closer to test day, I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page as far as monohybrid and dihybrid crosses go. Uh, so here's a real quick review on how to uh, do monohybrid and dihybrid crosses uh, inside of a Punnett square. Uh, but first, let's review real quick some vocabulary. Uh, let's make sure that everybody's on the same page with these or this terminology. First of all, we have uh, the term homozygous. Remember, we said that homozygous means same. And so if we have a homozygous genotype, that is one that either has two dominant alleles or one that has two recessives, and both of those are considered to be homozygous. Uh, the other word that we have is heterozygous. And remember we said earlier that hetero means different. So in this case, if we're going to have a heterozygous genotype, it has to be one dominant and one recessive. Uh, some other words that you might see in your homework that you may or may not have done yet uh, are these words purebred, which means homozygous, and then hybrid, which means heterozygous. So if you hear somebody that are in your homework, if you hear something that says that somebody is purebred for the dominant trait, well, that means that they have uh, this over here, they're purebred dominant. Or if you hear somebody say that they're purebred recessive, uh, that means that they have this one down here, that they're double recessive. All right, so let's talk about Punnett squares real quick. Um, you need to know how to fill in a Punnett square. You also need to know what a Punnett square is for. Uh, Punnett squares are used to predict the possible genotypes of a parent's offsprings. So what that means is that these letters in here are a prediction of what the parent's offsprings genotype might look like. Now, that does not mean that this is going to be the first kid this is the second, then this is the third, and then this is the fourth. That is wrong. That's not how we do this. That means that every single time that these parents reproduce, their kids could possibly get this genotype, or they could possibly get this one, or possibly get this genotype. Okay, We're not saying first kid, second kid, third kid, fourth kid, or anything like that. Every single time that they reproduce, they're going to get one of these four um, genotypes. All right, so moving on to a monohybrid cross. How do we set it up? Um, how do we fill it in? Okay, uh, well, the first thing is in a monohybrid cross, we're just trying to figure out how to cross just one trait. Uh, so in this case, let's say that, um, I don't know, that our A stands for something that is large. Okay, and then we'll say that the recessive trait is small. Okay, this is fictional. I made it up. Just go with it. Um, the Punnett square that I have filled in here says that you put the mother's genes on the left and the father's genes on top. It really doesn't matter. You could flip those around all you want to and you're still going to end up with the same results. But let's go with it. So we've got the maternal information here, which means mother. So I'm going to take the big A and I'm going to put it here. And then I've got the small A and I'm going to put it here. And then any letters that I put here on the left, they're all going to get filled in going to the right. Okay. And then let's take dad's information and let's put it up here. So I've got a big A and a small A, and I got that from right here. Okay. Now I'll take these letters and I'll drag them down. So I'm going to take this A and drag it down. Take this A and drag it down. I'm going to take this big A, drag it down, drag this one down also. Now I'm going to take mom's information and I'm going to drag it across to the right. And now I have filled in my Punnett square. Uh, excuse me. That's wrong. <laughs> Even your coach is not you know, immune from being wrong from time to time. Excuse me, this should have been a lowercase letter. They got copied across. So you guys can laugh at me on the video. That's fine. Um, but now what we need to do is we need to take a look at um, these genotypes in here and figure out what this means. If this is a dominant A and a dominant A, that means that this genotype codes for the dominant trait. This is one dominant and one recessive, so the dominant trait still wins. This is one dominant and one recessive, so the dominant trait still wins. And then finally over here we have two recessives. This is the only time that the recessive trait would win here. Okay, and you're going to fill in every single um, monohybrid cross the exact same way. Uh, put you know, either the father's letters on top or the mom's letters on top, that's fine. Just drag both of them down and then all these on the left, uh, drag them over to the right. Okay, 
Now, when we get to a dihybrid cross, it starts to get a little bit more difficult uh, because the first step in a dihybrid cross is you now have to figure out what are all of the possible two letter combinations that I can now make out of both of these letters. Okay. And so um, let's, you know, make up some letters or make up some traits that these could be for. So let's say that A once again stands for large. Let's say that little a stands for small. And then we could say that big B stands for black. And let's say that little b stands for white. Uh, this will all be usually given to you in the problem. We won't have to make these up every single time. Uh, but now let's take dad's information here and let's copy it up here. So I've got big A, little a, big B, little b. And now on every single one of these squares, I have to put an A and a B. And I have to figure out what are the all the combinations that I can make of A and B. And so I'll start with this A first. And if I think about it, if I start with this A, what's the first B that I can make a combo with? Is I can make put those two together. So I'm going to take those two letters and I'm going to put them here. So I've got A and B. Then what's the next combo that I can make with it? Well, I can pair it up with this B. So now I'm going to put big A, little b. Okay. And now I can't make any more combinations with this dominant A, but I can make some combinations with this lowercase a. So now I'm going to pair these two guys up. I'm going to write that down. And then I'm going to pair these two guys up and I'm going to write that down. Okay. And then I'll do the same thing over here for mom. Except this time I'll write her information just like this. So I need to make as many two letter combinations as I can between A's and B's. So I'm going to match up this A with this B, copy it here. I'm going to match up the same A with this little B down here, write it down. And then now I'm going to take the lowercase a, match it up with the big B, and then the lowercase a down here to the small b, and I'm going to write that down. Okay, now I'm ready to fill these in. And so this is not unlike the monohybrid cross at all. This is actually very similar. You're just going to fill in four letters on the inside of each square instead of just two. And so I'll start with uh, this letter right here. So I'm going to take this A and I'm going to drag it across. Then I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to grab this A and I'm going to drag it down. Okay. Then I can grab this B and I can fill it in across. And then now I'll grab this B up here again and bring it down. Okay. And that's my first possible genotype for our offspring. And I can follow this exact same pattern until the very, very end. Okay. So if I wanted to fill in uh, this box here, then it'd be very, very easy for me because all I'm going to do is drag this A down. I can drag this A across. I can drag this B across and drag this B down. And that's all it takes. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to fill in uh, this square right here, I take this A, drag it across, bring this A down, take this B and drag it across, and now take this B and drag it down. Okay, and I could continue that for all 16 of these squares, but I don't want to bore you while you sit here and watch me write. Uh, let's just make sure that we understand what's going on in here. Okay, so in this situation, uh, this individual would be dominant for A and dominant for B. So that means that this one would be uh, large and um, black if we have A and B in there. Uh, this individual would be recessive for A, so this person or this you know phenotype would end up being small, and then we have the dominant for B, so that would be black also. Okay, and so it's easier when you fill these in if you'll put the two uh, letters together that are the same. So for instance, here are the two A's together or here are the two B's together. It just makes it cleaner whenever you have to go through and figure out what all the phenotypes are. All right, so that should help you guys with your homework. It should help you study for your test a little bit. Uh, if you have any more questions, make sure you come to tutorials on Thursday before the test um, and ask me any questions that you have. All right, thanks for listening.